In the previous video, we learned how to factorize by taking out the highest common factor. But when we take out the highest common factor, some of you might, may have noticed that that is doing the opposite of what we do when we multiply out using the distributive law. And when we learned the distributive law, we learned how to multiply a monomial into a bracket, in other words, a single term into a bracket consisting of more than two terms. But we also learned how to multiply two binomials together. And one of the special cases that we looked at was when we multiply what we call sum and difference binomials together. So if we just remind ourselves, x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 3. We call this a sum and difference product because the brackets are, are the same, they have the same numbers in them, but one is adding and the other one is subtracting. One is a sum and the other one is a difference. And when we multiply a sum and difference product, what happens is that the outers and the inners turn out to be exactly the same thing with opposite signs. And as a result, when we add things that are the same value, but with opposite signs, they add up to zero. So when we multiply a sum and difference product, all we have to do is multiply the firsts, in this case, x times x, and the lasts, positive 3 times negative 3, because the outers and the inners will add up to zero. Let's have a look at another one. So 2a plus 3b and 2a minus 3b. Okay, again, the brackets are exactly the same. One is a sum and the other is a difference. So we only need to multiply the firsts. 2a times 2a is 4a squared. And the last, positive 3b times negative 3b is negative 9b squared. I want us now just to look at the features of the product of sum and difference brackets. So if you look at the x squared, x squared is something we would define as a perfect square because it can be square rooted. The square root of x squared is just x. But 9 is also a perfect square because it's 3 times 3. So in a sum and difference bracket, because the brackets are identical, when you multiply the firsts, you're multiplying something by itself. So your answer should always be a perfect square because that is the definition of a perfect square is that it has two factors, two things that you multiply that are exactly the same. And the sign in between them is a minus. And that is because whenever you multiply a positive and a negative, your result is always going to be a negative. The same thing is true of this expression here. 4a squared is also a perfect square. So is 9b squared. And the sign in between them is also a negative sign. So both of these expressions are what we could describe as being the difference, in other words, subtracting the difference of two squares. Both terms, it's a binomial expression, the, uh, both um, terms in the expression are perfect squares. So we call the product that comes from a sum and difference bracket the difference of two squares. So now, if we want to factorize the difference of two squares, we can use exactly that concept, but in reverse. So, for example, if we want to factorize the expression y squared minus 25. y squared is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square, and we are subtracting them. So, this expression is the difference of two squares. And I will sometimes refer to those as dots, just for short. Difference of two squares. Okay. And we know that the difference of two squares will come from a product of two binomials that look exactly the same, except one is a plus, one is a sum, and one is a difference. They need to look exactly the same. So y times y and 25 is 5 times 5. So we can factorize the difference of two squares by writing them as the product of sum and difference binomials. Okay, if we look at another one, um, 1 minus x squared. Right, 
one is often difficult to recognize we often miss that one actually is a perfect square the square root of one is one so it can be written as one times one so one is a perfect square x squared is a perfect square so this is the difference of two squares we can therefore factorize it into a sum and difference binomial 1 times 1 gives us 1 and x times x gives us 1 all right now we need to be really really careful here because there is no way that you can multiply the sum of two squares so for example if you've got x squared plus 4 the sum of two squares is actually a prime expression it doesn't have you, if there's no highest common factor, you actually cannot factorize x squared plus 4. There are no two binomials that will give you x squared plus 4 when you multiply them. So if it's the sum of two squares, be careful. If there's no highest common factor, then that expression is going to be a prime expression. All right. There are some examples in your homework book. If you can please pause the video here and try those examples on your own. Right, a squared minus 1, your first job is to look and see, is there a highest common factor? There isn't. a squared minus 1, there's nothing that's common to either of those. And now we look to see whether it is the difference of two squares. So a squared is a perfect square, 1 is a perfect square. They are being subtracted, so it is the difference of two squares. They will factor into sum and difference brackets. a squared is a times a and 1 is 1 times 1. Number 2, 9y squared minus 16z squared. Is there a highest common factor? No, there is no number that goes into 9 that also goes into 16 other than 1. And y squared and z squared, there's no common variable. Let's have a look for difference of squares. 9y squared is a perfect square. 16z squared is a perfect square, and they are being subtracted. So this is the difference of two squares. It will factor into a sum and difference product. 9y squared is 3y times 3y. And 16z squared is 4z times 4z. Right, and number three you need to be very, very careful with. 4x squared plus 36. It looks very, very much like a difference of two squares problem. 4x squared is a perfect square. And 36 is a perfect square. But the challenge or the problem is that they are being added. And there is no way that you can add the sum or find the, the, the factors of the sum of two perfect squares. But in this case, there is actually a common factor. 4 goes into 4 and 4 goes into 36. So we can actually take 4 out as a highest common factor. 36 divided by 4 is 9. And x squared plus 9 is the sum of two squares, so it cannot be factorized any further. And that's your final answer.